Hello, I would like to talk about the resin and the packing materials that was used in the mummification of Takabuti. So what were the mummification options open to Takabuti? Uh, and you can see here, and I'm sure many of you uh, are familiar with this, is that there's a number of options according to Herodotus, from the most expensive through to the kind of cheaper end of the market, so to speak, where the mummy was simply kind of the eviscerated uh, and then uh, preserved in natural. Now, it's apparent that in Takabuti's case, that only the best was good enough. Uh, she was subject to the most expensive, uh, and we have identified all of these criteria, brain removal, flank cut open, etc. Uh, we were not able to uh, look at whether the body was packed in natron, uh, but nevertheless that is highly likely, as was the case with all the mummification options available. So what are the composition of mummification resins kind of in general? They tend to consist firstly of coniferous oils, cedar, pine, juniper and mastic resin, myrrh, uh, bees and wax and these were both to preserve the mummy uh, and secondly to impart a pleasant or some of them to impart a pleasant smell. Uh, bitumen was sometimes used uh, and the Dead Sea has been found to be the most common source. Incidentally oxidation results in blackening of the resin so a black mummy does not necessarily mean the presence of bitumen. And in fact, bitumen was not used in mummification uh, in earlier periods, right up till the, the New Kingdom, where it began to be introduced. And if you look at the bar chart here, you can see that with time from New Kingdom to late period and to Ptolemaic, there was a progressive increase in the number of mummies that were found to uh, contain bitumen. So that really sets the scene for looking at uh, the mummification resin in Takabuti. So what is the composition of Takabuti's mummification resin? So a sample was, of the resin was taken uh, from the wrappings uh, around the neck as shown by the red arrow and only a small amount 0.02 of a gram uh, of resin is required for analysis. So we analysed the composition of the resin of the mummy of Takabuti using gas chromatography mass spectrometry. This included pyrolysis GCMS to analyse larger molecules by heating the sample is passed through a glass tube uh, into the machine uh, and heated the electricity passed through the wire that can be seen in the second diagram and note the red arrow. Now I haven't got time to go into principles of gas chromatography but the key take home message is that it separates organic molecules based on differences in the chemical uh, properties so that therefore one is able to identify the organic component of the, the resin. Now the, the resin cannot be analysed directly on the machine by putting the solid sample into the machine. It needs to be dissolved in a solvent first so that then the components can be separated and identified using GCMS. Here is one example of the chromatographic analysis that was carried out on the resin. And of course, more detail, uh, including other spectra, can be found in the book. Uh, the peaks indicate uh, different components as separated by chromatography at different times. Uh, and the relative intensity indicates, of course, the relative amounts of the different organic components that are present. Uh, and it is apparent that the resin is 
dominated by plant and animal derived resins and oils including the two shown here camphor which is found in plant oils such as cedar oil and retin which is uh, a component of degraded pine resin so indicating the presence of pine naphthalene which you'll also see highlighted now is ubiquitous in living and dead uh, organ, uh, organic material so is not diagnostic. Interestingly enough, uh, no bitumen was found as one would expect peaks for hydrocarbons such as hopanes and stearines uh, and these were not found uh, in the resin from Takabuti. So from the chromatographic analysis, it is apparent that the mummification resin of Takabuti consists of a number of components, uh, in particular lipids of plant and or animal origin. There was also the presence of pine resin and castor oil, and here are the seeds from which the oil is derived. There was no evidence for the use of bitumen in this particular mummification resin. Overall, the, the resin analysis shows that the material used in the treatment of Takabuti was similar to other Egyptian mummies, although bitumen has been found in, in mummies from the same period as Takabuti. Moving now on to the packing material that was included in the mummy of Takabuti, the question is why, why bother? Uh, removal, evisceration or dissolution of the internal organs was common in ancient Egyptian mummies uh, and began with a pharaoh but increased with time to encompass other groups within society. The majority of cases the organs were removed by transabdominal evisceration, the most expensive, according to Herodotus, and as was the case with uh, Takabuti, as shown by Dr. Loins. Now, removal of the organs would obviously result in collapse of the lower part of the body and, of course, hence distort the mummy. So, to maintain the shape, the body cavity was filled with packing material encased within linen bags to uh, provide a more natural shape. So, what is the composition of the packing material that was used in the mummification of Takabuti? When she was unwrapped in the early 19th century, it was noted that the body was filled with a dry powdery substance that had a heavy aromatic odour. Now, this is perhaps indicative of the presence of fragrant woods, such as pine, and aromatic spices. Sampling of the packing material. Five replicate samples were taken at intervals from the intracorporeal cavity on both sides of the spine, as uh, described earlier by Dr. Loyans. Likewise, he mentioned that the samples were removed using a Murphy bone biopsy needle with a sample diameter of 2.4 millimetres. So what was the packing material composed of? The, the sampled material uh, consisted of fine brownish powder with a particle size of two to three millimetres max with most being much smaller than this. Therefore it was possible to image using light microscopy without any preparation. The sample was simply put onto a slide uh, and examined using the light microscope shown here. This slide shows a low power dark field image of the packing material uh, and the blue arrows show what is clearly small flakes of wood. Uh, and you can see that some of these are up to one, two uh, millimetres, if you look at the scale on the left, but a lot smaller than that. In addition, shown by the red arrows, there were these round kind of aggregates that were clearly not wood or other 
vegetable material. Here you can see a high power dark field light micrograph of a wood flake and note the kind of longitudinal vessels. These are called trachids uh, and these uh, transport water and nutrients into the plant. I think if you look closely you can see that the, that the sample is kind of completely dominated by these trachid vessels. This is indicative of softwood because hardwoods have lots of other cell types as well as trachids. So it's quite clear that this is softwood from the light microscopy. To further characterize the packing material, we require to use higher magnifications. So the samples were then examined using scanning electron microscopy. Here we have a low magnification scanning electron micrograph of the packing material and you can clearly see one of the aggregates shown by the blue arrow and a wood shaving shown by the uh, red arrow. So what type of wood was used in the packing material? This uh, um, uh, electron micrograph is a higher magnification of a portion of one of the wood flakes. Further magnification of these trachid vessels, the vessels that transport water and uh, salts through the plant. You can see, as shown by the arrows, these pits which are called vestured pits. Now these are characteristic of different species of softwood. Uh, and the higher magnification is difficult to kind of see them, so I've just shown a diagram. But this characteristic shape and appearance indicates the presence of cedar, so that at least some of the uh, wood flakes in the packing material is cedar wood. So moving on now to the aggregates, and what are they made of? This image is a scanning electron micrograph high power of such an aggregate and as you can see it could be almost anything. In fact it looks superficially like sand. This is a sand grain from another publication. But in fact we know that it is not sand. The reason for that is of course looking at it will not tell you that. But when you image a sample under the electron microscope, X-rays are produced of different energies. And these can be detected and separated on the basis different energy indicates different elements. So you can find out the elemental composition of the particular sample. So how do we know that the aggregates are not inorganic. This shows a typical x-ray spectra of the aggregates compared to wood. Counts per second giving peak height against x-ray energy uh, from which you can fingerprint and identify therefore the elements that are present in your sample. And you can see the wood in red uh, and aggregates in blue dots, you can see they were very similar. Uh, if the aggregates were inorganic, you would find high levels of, for example, calcium, perhaps iron, uh, silicon, but there's very little, very little calcium, and similar to wood, and none of the others. And, and therefore, this indicates that the aggregates are not inorganic, such as sand. So if the aggregates are not inorganic, then what are they? They're, they're likely to be organic, of course, and we hypothesize that in fact they were congealed resin. Uh, and therefore we examined 
the aggregates and compared them with the mummification resin using gas chromatography mass spectroscopy. And you can see the spectra of the packing resin compared to the mummy resin that you've seen before. And you can see that some of the components are very similar and the spectra overall are virtually identical, different peak heights, but nevertheless very, very similar. So this strongly suggests that the uh, aggregates are congealed resin and of similar, possibly identical composition to the mummification resin. In conclusion, the mummification resin of Takabuti consists of fats, oils and waxes, including pine resin and castor oil. It did not contain bitumen. Resin of similar composition has been found in mummies from this period. Bitumen is sometimes but not always present. The packing material from Takabuti consists largely of cedar wood plus other probably local softwoods. The wood was mixed with resin that likely dried and congealed into small aggregates over time. The reason for the addition of the resin was probably to impart a pleasant odour on the packing material and hence the mummy. The packing material resin of a similar, possibly identical composition to the mummification resin. It is likely that the wood flakes and smaller particles are sawdust produced during the manufacture of the coffins and other funerary items. If so, this suggests a close geographical and or commercial relationship between the embalmers and those producing the funerary equipment. I'd like to acknowledge Dr Peter Gesson from Kew who confirmed the identification of the wood and secondly the technical staff in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences and the School of Biological Sciences for provision of respectively uh, the scanning and light microscopes. Thank you.